Thank you so much, everyone, for coming out today. Uh, you know, I was asked by a fan earlier, uh, not asked, she was came up to my booth and she said, thank you for creating her universe for female fans because I am a fan and, and uh, if, you're in this, if, if you're in this room, stand up uh, because I forget your name, but you said, I'm a fan and I am not here just to hold my husband's bag. So, how many women are in this room because we are here for us and we are fans and we're not here just to tag along. <laughs> well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it short because I want to get to the amazing women here on our panel, but when I was cast as Ahsoka Tano, uh, geez, over four years ago now, I was hoping that we would bring in more girl fans because of the show. And uh, so I became keenly aware of our female fan base. Well, what I also became keenly aware of is how many female fans already existed and weren't being catered to. So, uh, we created Her Universe, and here we are. Her Universe right now is a merchandise line for female sci-fi fans. We're starting with Star Wars, but we also want it to be a community of female fans. It's more than just a merchandise line. We want to hear your feedback, and we want to fight the stereotype that, that girls aren't interested in Star. I mean, in sci-fi and Star Wars, because you know, sci-fi is for the people. It's not just a boys' club or a girls' club. It's for people in general. It's for everyone. So, without further ado, let me introduce everyone on this panel. We'll start right here with Melinda Snodgrass. Yes. Melinda is an accomplished writer of both science fiction novels, and in 1988, she accepted a job on Star Trek The Next Generation and began, yes, <laughs> and began her Hollywood career where she worked on staff on numerous shows and pilots and feature films. Her novels, The Edge of Reason and The Edge of Ruin, are currently available from Tor Books, and she has delivered a new screenplay to her manager. I'm excited about that. And she has uh, delivered her first novel in a new urban fantasy series featuring blood-sucking lawyers called This Case Is Gonna Kill Me. So, <laughs> and right next to her we have Erica Kinnear. Uh, <laughs> as director of original programming and development at Sci-Fi, Erica oversees creative aspects on several original sci-fi series, including Stargate Universe, Sanctuary, and Outer Space Astronauts, as well as sci-fi movies events such as Alice, a personal favorite of mine. Erica also works in development, seeking out original programming and potential talent for sci-fi. So she's been at sci-fi since 2008. <laughs> and now we have Jane Espenson. Jane has written for Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, Firefly, Dollhouse, Battlestar Galactica, and Caprica, among many other series. And she has also written an episode of HBO's upcoming Game of Thrones, and is co-creator of Sci-Fi's Warehouse 13. She is also creating new projects of her own, so we're very excited about that. And next to Jane, we have Katie Cook. And Katie Cook is a comic artist and illustrator from Ann Arbor, Michigan. She is best known for her comics and cartooning work in the Star Wars universe. Uh, and she's also designed a shirt for her universe, our Daddy's Little Girl shirt. And, um, but she's also worked on licensed products, uh, properties for Marvel Comics, DC Comics, NBC, Lord of the Rings, and Jim Henson and more. And she's also the creator of the webcomic Gronk, A Monster Story. <laughs> Next to Katie, we have the amazing Mary Franklin. Uh, currently, yes. Currently, the senior events lead for Lucasfilm. Mary Franklin produces events large and small around the world, from television appearances with Darth Vader, as well as the huge Star Wars celebrations, and Celebration 5 is coming up in Orlando, Florida, uh, for thousands of fans. She is editor of the official Star Wars Fan Club newsletter, Man the Tracks, and is co-author of the recently released Star Wars Encyclopedia. Thank you, Mary. 
Next, we have Pat Staggs. designed a shirt for her universe, the amazing Han and Leia I know shirt. <laughs> uh, illustrated over 130 cards for Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, Topps card set. Cat Stags joined the Star Wars world officially in 2004 and is currently illustrating a new exclusive print for Celebration 5, which I will be picking up. Cat also works in the comic book and film industries, ranging from creating original character sketches for a new character for Stan Lee for Power Entertainment. And uh, also has done work for Rittenhouse Archives, Complete Marvel Avengers, X-Men, uh, X-Men Archives, and DC Legacy card set. And is currently working on cover art for two different soon-to-be-released comics. So thank you, Kat. <laughs> and on, on the end, last but not least, uh, Bonnie Burton, uh, author of... Bonnie Burton's books include the Star Wars Craft Book, which is a personal favorite of mine as well, uh, Draw Star Wars The Clone Wars. Uh, her writing has appeared in the comic book anthology The Girl's Guide to Guy Stuff, I like it, as well as Star Wars Insider, Wired, and Geek Monthly. She also founded one of the first online geek girl sites, girl.com. She currently works for Lucasfilm as senior editor at StarWars.com and edits the official Star Wars blog as well as Star Wars Twitter and Facebook which I'm sure we all read. So let's go ahead and start here, because I know you all came to hear these amazing ladies speak, and why don't we just start with Melinda? Let's go on down here. Um, you know, I actually had a chance to talk to everyone on the panel beforehand, and when Melinda and I talked, um, it seems that women are reading science fiction novels more than ever, in science fiction books. And what do you think the women are looking for in their reading experience? I'll try to project. When, uh, <laughs> when Ashley first contacted me and Dan, we had a wonderful conversation. And I mentioned the statistic that actually they weren't terribly aware of, which is that 60% of all books are purchased by women. So as a novelist, when I'm wearing my novelist hat, I had to think about that, and I had to think, if I want to try to make my books really appealing, how do I appeal to a female audience? And one of the things I think that's key is that, I know as a reader and a viewer myself, I love relationships, and I'm interested in what draws people together, and what, um... Let me give you a quick example. If you look at Spock, and you look at Data, those characters captured women. When I was a little girl, Spock captured me because I kept thinking, I bet I could make him feel something. <laughs> Everyone knew that if they could just spend some time with Data, he would find that human emotion. And those are the kind of things that women are interested in communication and relationships. And not to say that we don't love action. I mean, I used to be called the girl who writes action. Um, and so I do enjoy it, but I think it's critical for appealing to women viewers and readers that we give them characters that they can identify with and bond with. That being said, I, I want to talk a little bit about the fact that I think you also need to have powerful women characters. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to ruffle a few feathers here, but did any of you see the mashup of Buffy and Edward? Woo! You know, while a tortured character, as in Twilight, is again appealing, I loved Buffy's reaction <laughs> to those kind of, of behaviors. Um, 